In this Wrestle Talk news, Bray Wyatt calls out WWE, John Moxley shoots hard, CM Punk on a WWE return, and more. Super click the subscribe button and enable notifications for daily wrestling news videos. Support Wrestle Talk! Happy day after Halloween, everybody! And congratulations for your Squid Game costume that was really unique and nobody else did it. Our favourite professional wrestling stars did just as well. Here's Kayla Braxton dressed up as her fancy man, Paul Heyman. Johnny Gargano and Candice LeRae dressed up as Vision from WandaVision. And Becky Lynch's mum in that 60s photo shoot Big E always thirsts over, respectively. Have a cold shower, Big E! And of course, Sting, going as his favourite wrestler, Dan Housen. Get well soon, Dan Housen and Munt. Warner, who both suffered leg injuries at an indie show last night. But the best Halloween costume 2021 easily goes to John Morrison, who went as the man wrestlers fear the most. Dave Meltzer, complete with press pass, way too tight t-shirt to flex those typewriter pounding biceps, and gold stars. Morrison rated his own costume five and a half stars. With Bray Wyatt's non-compete clause expiring last Friday, I thought for sure we'd see him debut somewhere over Halloween weekend, which was also the two-year anniversary of his Fiend Universal title win in Saudi Arabia. Instead, all we got of the now-named Wyndham Rotunda was him shooting on WWE over Twitter. WWE released Wyatt on the 31st of July because of budget cuts. The same reason management had given to every other performer they've let go over the last year and a half. But with Bray's Fiend character selling so much merchandise, many doubted the financial explanation. Andrew Zarian has since called the budget cuts reason utter bullshit instead pointing to Bray being difficult with some performance issues in the ring, and he had some weight issues. BW Insider also noted Wyatt's hot and cold relationship with Vince McMahon and Kevin Dunn, while others have claimed Bray was too protective over his character's creative. Because screw you for caring so much! And over the weekend, Ringside News relayed what one of their sources told them about Wyatt behind the scenes. Not being an apologist or a WWE defender, just telling you like it is. If you were running a business and winning was on your payroll, you'd release him too. Between his backstage antics and the way he handled himself when making millions and millions while medically flagged, he really deserved to be released. Replying to that article being tweeted out, Wyndham himself has responded, first with a rock eye rolling gif, then posting, now that we have Johnny and Bruce's opinion, I would like to share mine soon. This is just Rotunda's latest hint that he will be doing an interview imminently, possibly suggesting he has a new wrestling deal lined up. Cough talk is Jericho podcast, cough! The Johnny and Bruce Wyndham refers to here are most likely WWE's head of talent relations, John Laurinaitis, and the executive director of Raw and SmackDown, Bruce Pritchard. It appears Rotunda is implying they are the ones who have leaked the information to ringside news, or at least someone underneath them, just like Paul Heyman was speculated to do to the dirt sheets in the past. This this could be a case of WWE management trying to create a narrative rather than objective facts. As always, take with a pinch of salt. It's also important to note that Johnny and Bruce are the infamous Vince McMahon Yes Men. So while Rotunda can blame the messengers, these feelings are most likely coming from Vince himself. And now more has come out about The Fiend's original WWE plans. Artist Carl Scarborough, who did a lot of the design work for the Fiend character, has revealed on Twitter, Fun fact! The WWE wanted to bring the Firefly Funhouse alive, but Wyndham would only do it if he played the characters himself. Only one was mocked up, and this would have been the concept for the Firefly Funhouse Huskus. It was hinted, but ultimately shelved. Along with a terrifying concept drawing of a Huskus version of the Fiend. Scarborough also shared his potential mask designs for Alexa Bliss's Fiend character that he drew at the beginning of their run together. You can hear more from Scarborough and how he contributed to Wyatt's gimmick in our Fiend Explained trilogy over on Parts for No. But Bray isn't the only one who's been calling out WWE's power figures behind the scenes. In an interview with Josh Martinez, CM Punk has explained why he chose AEW over making a return to WWE. If I went back to WWE, what would I do? There's a formula. There's a track record and a formula. This is what they do. Batista comes back. He wins the Royal Rumble. He main events WrestleMania. Edge comes back. He's in the Royal Rumble. I think he was in it twice. There's a formula, and I was bored of that sh 10 years ago, so I'm bored of it now. Instead, Punk wanted to tell a different kind of story where he's slowly rekindling his character's love of professional wrestling while helping elevate younger talent. But the harshest words for WWE management were reserved by John Moxley in his autobiography, Mox. 
where in typical Moxie style, it's written like a series of brutally honest, captivating promos, including one on WWE's longtime executive producer, Kevin Dunn, widely seen as one of the most powerful people in the company. Apparently, Moxie had apologized to Dunn for something, which Dunn accepted, but then Kevin Dunn went behind Moxie's back and started to say the apology wasn't sufficient, tarnishing Moxie's reputation without him knowing, leading Moxie to call him, amongst other things, the magical king wizard who lives in the truck and controls the universe, and, slightly more colorfully, a dickless mother effer and a little C-word rat. Mox expanded on how Dunn, who's been in his position since the early 80s, plays a little finger style game of politics in the company. The reality in a place like WWE is that one comment, one little seed planted by a guy in Kevin Dunn's position can be extremely detrimental to someone's future there. There's a lot of power, and that power breeds ego. Connecticut, old rich boy's club ego. I've heard all kinds of stories about that guy messing with people's careers, but this isn't that kind of book. Suffice to say, that dude is a f bag. Maybe this is that kind of book. No, no, but for real, don't even get me started on, no, this is not that kind of book. Kevin Dunn. Sometimes I wish Mox would stop being so cryptic. Say what you really mean. Mox's autobiography is out now and it comes highly recommended. He mentioned in his Wrestling Observer interview last Friday that he'll be doing the audiobook version too, which will be awesome. But WWE isn't all bad. Brian Danielson reportedly left the company on such good terms, the door is open for him to come back. Fightful Select has reported Danielson was praised backstage in WWE in his final months in the company. He was added to the Universal title match at WrestleMania 37 in a last minute call, and went above and beyond to make his last match with Roman Reigns, the Universal Championship Loser Leaves Town Smackdown match on April 30th, as good as possible. According to Fightful Source, WWE couldn't have asked for more from Brian, and he handled things so well that a lot of people didn't think he was actually leaving or taking any time off. Despite Danielson then leaving for AEW, his relationship with WWE is said to be on very good terms. But it's a day of the week, you know what that means. A new story about Charlotte Flair having heat backstage. Back in August, a Charlotte vs Nia Jax match on Raw broke down into a bit of an actual fight, with the two momentarily pausing in the ring, refusing to sell moves and slapping each other. For reals is. Now Dave Meltzer is reporting the women talent in the locker room was solidly behind Jax for standing up to Flair and showing her she can't bully her around. Even though it was Jax's unprofessional in ring work that appeared to have made Charlotte get so frustrated in the first place. Charlotte is also rumored to have been the one to throw the pie at Kevin Owens, cause the demise of WCW, and book the Fiend versus Seth Rollins finish at Hell in a Cell in 2019. Charlotte has seemingly responded to the now 10 days of heat reports on her, tweeting a Saturday Night Live gif cap I heard a rumor. I heard a rumor. Speaking of rumors, according to the latest Wrestling Observer newsletter, WWE is trying to recruit shorter referees to make their wrestlers look even bigger. Get them do the crab. Crab referees. Refer crabs. Referees, backstage interviewers, just make them stand really, really far away like Gandalf did with the hobbits when filming Lord of the Rings, Kevin Dunn. That's a production tip for free. One of the most exciting wrestlers I've seen live in the last few years, Speedball Mike Bailey, has just signed with Impact Wrestling, following his match against Josh Alexander at last night's Destiny Wrestling event. Bailey is a legit Taekwondo black belt and has been wrestling for over a decade. Just when he seemed set to break through in the indie explosion of 2016, though, he was banned from entering the United States for five years because of a visa issue. Bailey is Canadian. Thankfully, that has now expired. And after losing the last season of our Fantasy Predictions Wrestle League for the second time in a row, you have all voted for me to do a music video punishment. Drum roll. Of our truths. What's up? Ah, oh, crap. Now go watch 10 wrestling stories you missed last week. Because of all of that, there have been some news stories that have slipped through the cracks and you totally missed them. Like all those lads on NXT missing MSK and Imperium in the tag team match. Do better. Don't part like the Red Sea. Catch the buggers. Also subscribe to this channel, please. Why not? Here are 10 news stories you may have missed from this past week.